Hey everyone, in this video we will learn about some of the common method of Selenium WebDriver. Now before we begin, we will first upgrade the Selenium version because Selenium 4 official version has been recently released. So it's better to upgrade it to Selenium 4 and there are some new method. So we will learn about those as well that are different than Selenium 3. So let's go ahead and first upgrade the Selenium version. Now. To check your current version of selenium, you can type pip list command in your command prompt or terminal and you, you will get a list of all of the packages that you have installed with their version number. So in here you can see I have a selenium 3.141.0. So I want to, to upgrade that to selenium 4 and there are a couple ways you can do that. First thing you can do is you can run pip install dash dash upgrade selenium if you run this command it will automatically upgrade your selenium version to 4 if you don't have selenium installed in your machine at all and you want to install selenium 4 you can use pip install selenium dash dash double equal to 4.0.0 and if you run this command it will install selenium 4 in your machine since i already have selenium installed I will use the upgrade command and run it. And now I'll clear the console again and check my pip list. And you can see now I have Selenium 4.0.0. I have upgraded my Selenium version to 4.0. And you can follow the same approach to upgrade your Selenium as well now let's start working with the selenium 4 so very first thing we need to do is import our web drivers we can say from selenium import web driver now in selenium 4 uh, they have introduced a new method you cannot directly pass executable path while creating a chrome driver instead they are suggesting to use the service object now the executable path within the chrome while creating the driver is not completely disabled so if you use the same approach as i showed in the previous video it will still work but it will give you a deprecation warning that executable path has been deprecated please uh, pass driver using a service object something like that so now since we are already on selenium 4 i am going to use the service object and to use that first we need to import that to import that you can say from selenium dot web driver chrome dot services import service now we will use this service object to pass our executable path and you can see here in service object you can pass quite a bit of different argument executable path is one you can also pass a port you can also pass a lock path name and also there is an option to pass an environment so we will for now we will just use to use it for passing executable path for our chrome driver so let's create a service object i'll call it service obj equal to service and you see executable path automatic came over so I, i'll put equal to sign and here I have to put a path for a Chrome driver. So my Chrome driver is stored on a in our desktop under the cell folder. So I'll pass it as users user one desktop. My folder name is cell, and then you have to buy the actual Chrome driver. If you are on a Windows. You have to do the same thing, but instead of Chrome driver, you will have Chrome driver dot exe. Okay, so you can also like do this. Since I am in Mac, I can right click on this and click on a get info and copy the path from here. And it will be essentially give me the same thing, right? If you are on window that I, I know there is also an option. You can copy similar path in Windows as well. So now since we have passed a path here, now we need to pass this service object while creating our driver. So I'll now create a driver and 
we can say web driver dot chrome and instead of passing an executable path here we can pass service equal to service obj that the one we created now uh, is this the best approach that this is how you should use the service object and answer is no i mean there are a couple different ways you can use the service object and uh, uh, quite honestly selenium 4 is still relatively new so this is the way i like to use it but if there is a different approach uh, that you find somewhere else and would like to use it feel free to do so uh, so now since we created a driver object let's run our code uh, this should not do anything but at least open a blank browser window so i'll go ahead and run my code close this redundant thing and we can run python and my file name is uh, part2.py and let's run it and you can see as expected it opened a blank browser window so this is working as expected i'll close this one and now we can use this driver and uh, perform different activities so i can simply say driver.get and in here we can pass an url.https uh, slash www dot google dot com and if I rerun my code again now it should take me to the google dot com home page so as you can see it open a new browser window and take me to the google dot com home page all right now let's learn understand some of the common method that this driver object comes with and one of the common method is maximizing a browser window so now if i run my browser window this time you can monitor it closely it's opening the browser but it's not completely maximized you can see there are some space here on the sides that is not completely filled so to solve that we can pass the driver dot maximize command you can see here driver dot maximize window and when you pass this method it will maximize your window so with this code this is really simple code what it will does is first it will create a blank browser it will go to google.com and then it will maximize the window so that's how it should work so let's run our code one more time you can see here it done exactly what i mentioned it open first open a blank browser window went to google.com and then maximized it now you can see here this automated browser acquired full workspace of my desktop and that's how you can maximize the window there are a couple other method as well that you can use let's let me close this uh, automated uh, open browser window first and we will go back and look at the other method now this is this is the way you can maximize your window there are other ways you can set a specific size of your window and to do that you can use driver dot set a window size and here you can pass your width and height in a pixel and selenium will adjust the window size according to your dimensions so let's pass it 500 or let's make it a little bigger and make it 600 600 and run our code so before we run our code this time what it will do it will open a blank browser tab first go to google.com and then when it reaches this line it should set window size to 600 by 600 pixel so let's run our code now so it went to google.com and now you can see it has been resized to 600 by 600 now i can't really measure the size but you have seen it was larger before and then it shrunks and become kind of a square which is a 600 by 600 pixel now, another thing you can do is you can see it's always opening in this upper left corner right so there is one option to specify the position where you want to keep this browser as well now to do that let me first close this one go back to our code and you can use driver dot set of window position command and in here you have to pass x and y axis in a pixel and when you pass that and when selenium reaches this command it will basically move window to that particular x and y coordinate so 
So let's pass it uh, like uh, 500 pixel on X axis and 100 pixel on a Y axis. And let's rerun our code one more time. And you can see, okay, and now you can see here window used to be here. Now it's moved somewhere here in the middle based on our X and Y axis. So it moved 500 on a X axis. So it moved horizontally from here to here 500 and from vertical. So from top it moved 100 pixel down and here it reaches. So these are some of the common method that you can use. Uh, there is another method by using which you can instead of passing the window position, you can also get the position. To do that, you can simply say driver dot and I'll comment this line. Otherwise, it will give us the same result. So I'll say driver dot uh, get window position and using this method, let me wrap this in a print statement so we can see that in a console using this method, you can get the actual position of a window rather than setting it. So now if I rerun my code, it should print window position in my console. And I ran it and you can see the X coordinate is 22 pixel, Y coordinate is 45 pixel. So this is how you can get the position of the window size. So this is another method you can use. Now you can see here, uh, another thing I wanted to show you every time I have to close this browser manually. So this is redundant. It should close every time you open a browser and you complete your action. It should close it automatically. And there are two different ways you can do that. Uh, one thing is you can use a driver dot close method. With this method, it will close the browser. Now I'll run my code. It will be very fast, but this time it will automatically close the browser instead of me closing it manually. So I'll run the code here. And you can see here it, that action was really quick. It opened the window. It resized it by 600 by 600. Gave me the window position in my console and closed it. Let me just rerun it one more time to show you it. it it's going to be really quick and uh, it's a matter of seconds. So you can see here it opened. Go to google.com. Give me the window position and closed it. Uh, another method you can use it is windows dot quit and I'll tell you the difference between driver dot close and driver dot quit. But let's first see the behavior because there is no behavior difference on UI that you'll see, but there is a difference. So now I'll use the driver dot quit redo the action and you will not see any difference. It will do the same thing. Just simply close the browser. Now there is a difference between driver dot quit and driver dot close. You will not see major difference on a UI, but what driver dot close does is it closes only current window while driver dot quit closes the entire execution process itself. Okay, so it will destroy the driver itself uh, while driver dot close will just close the current window. Uh, you will not see UI difference on screen, but when you have to execute thousand of test cases, it's always a best practice to go with driver dot quit rather than driver dot close because it will save you a lot of memory. When you uh, use driver dot quit, it will immediately terminate the entire execution process for that particular driver. And then you for uh, your next test case, you can create a brand new driver and work with that. So that's how you can create a Chrome driver with Selenium 4 and use some of this common method. There are other common method as well. So I'll recommend you reading Selenium official documentation and you will find lots of common methods you can directly use on the driver object. Thank you for watching this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.